מחוברת לרבנים הראשונים האלה. So, hermeneutics is the art or the principle of interpreting the Bible. So, when we speak of hermeneutics, hermeneutics is an art or a skill of Bible interpretation. Okay? So, once you approach any text, Hermeneutics does not just apply to the Bible. It also applies to any text that you read. Because uh, you can never understand any literature when you don't understand hermeneutics. That's why we go to school. Uh, I remember when growing up, we used to be taught what we call comprehension, um, where we were taught how to read, how to you know assimilate and disseminate the information that you have acquired. So there was simply hermeneutics. So hermeneutics is simply the art or a skill of Bible interpretation. So Master Hermeneutics is a center skill. Now from the newspaper, when you read the newspaper, you apply hermeneutics. You know, because you don't just put yourself in the story. You just, just go just go, hey, oh my page uh uh, how, how do I fit in here? You know, no, you just read the whole thing to understand it so that then, you know, you can disseminate the information according to what you've already learned. Uh, by default, you have applied what we call hermeneutics. So, hermeneutics is an art or a scheme of Bible interpretation. Now, it's complicated when it comes to the Bible. I will tell you why. It's complicated when it comes to the Bible because the Bible is sort of a sacred text and since it is a sacred text many people treat it as a pious type of a book. Many people would uh, as a pious yeah, sacred or sacred yeah oh okay yeah, right, okay. Sacred. In pronunciation. All right, no, no, no. Just that I'm, I'm Zulu, so when I pronounce things, I pronounce it. Zulu. You know, it's like, um, you know, when I'm off with that, Uma, when Uma is in the commercial school, you know, Uma, I think I'm a city head, you know. I always use the word head. I'm head. And if I were hurt, so my brother, my mom was very just good with that. So my mate, I'm about to say, "Tina said hurt." You know, I'm really hurt. I'm hurt. Even the way you pronounce it, it's a bit different. So you guys will forgive me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, I'm from the uh, Eloshi. So I'm from this one. So when I speak, I have to think. Sometimes you find he said, you know, you know, many times because I'm trying to, you know, and and I I normally see these young chaps that follow me now. Some of them hey, you know, you know, you know, and yeah, you know, it's not a, it's not a, a spiritual thing. It's just simply my antics to be able to set aside to just process the the chain of thoughts in my mind. Alright, so it's not a spiritual thing. So guys, 
my name is on this you know you know most of the time it's simply that and that more closer so masculine again hermeneutics hermeneutics is an art or a scheme of bible interpretation now what complicates our reading of the bible is that first of all it is a sacred text okay <laughs> try it. um since it's a sacred text um in our minds you know we sort of treat it as a pious book so we go in order for me to understand the bible i need the holy spirit uh, to help me read it or help me understand it do you know those people who say you know what uh, you know I, I cannot really read the bible uh, unless the holy spirit helps me to understand it that statement is innocent and sounds very um you know spiritual but the truth is it is a very dangerous statement i need the holy spirit to read uh, the bible no you don't need the holy spirit to read the bible you need the mind to read the bible because the bible is inspired by the holy spirit so you cannot separate the holy spirit and the bible that is why Amanda Baningi, when they approach the Bible, because they believe it is the Holy Spirit who should, uh, in a way, um, help them to read the Bible. They say, Baba lazy, and I'm going to figure out my ideas like, you know, talking to Amanda Baningi, the kind of Christians especially, they don't use their brains because they say everything is from the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Right? So, when you start the Bible, you need to apply your mind. You know, yeah, your mind has to be applied. So then, that when you read the Bible, you read the Bible not as a spiritual book. You read it applying the musical rules, and the Bible will prove itself that it is spiritual. So the spirituality of the Bible is gained by you extracting from it, not from imposing. Because if you have a in the Bible, you know, if you put the Bible more and more, you read the Bible to the Holy Spirit, who's going to accomplish it? In his mind. And this Africa said, no, I should then find a way to, you know, support my idea. And then it goes, you know, I had a revelation from the Holy Spirit. Then you're not really getting the lecture in hermeneutics. So hermeneutics again is an art or a skill of Bible interpretation. Alright. Why do we need hermeneutics? Why? Why would I even consider going through hermeneutics? Okay, it's simple. Hermeneutics is very important. Let me make an example. Okay. Hermeneutics is very important. It was such a statement because I'm not going to understand and we have to say the statement. In that Bible, it falls under this. The Bible was not written to you. However, it was written for you. This must be said. The Bible was not written to you, the Bible was written for you. What do we mean by this? Umbezu is one of the pastors that we have. And let's say um, we don't manipulate things in our life. And we, I say to him, you know, I want us to have a conference club in Tata. Um, can we meet this Friday a cartoon game? You know, and I'm I'm sending him a letter. So Ungo Mezulu is my direct audience. So Ungo Mezulu is my direct audience. So there is a communication between me and him, and it's direct. The conversation is now is a direct conversation, 
and young in the Kurumai, whatever that I'm saying to him, he understands, he does not need any interpretation. Okay? Because he understands what we are talking about. As I'm saying, you know, we need to have a conference. If, when, I, when I speak of Eastern Cape, he knows Eastern Cape in his mind. You know, when you speak about Cattleville, you should meet in Cattleville. You know, he, he understands Cattleville. Based on the conversations, previous conversations that we had, he conversations, he understands it very well. He does not need anyone to interpret for him because I am the direct speaker to him and he understands even in background from which we are speaking from because we have a relationship with him. So he is my direct audience. So meaning that when I convey my message, I convey it directly to him. So it's direct to him. But then we find that there is a third party. Maybe our letter is kept somehow and a third party gets it. So this one is a third party. He gets this book or he gets this letter. And then when he reads this letter, now he hears Uko Pose speaking to Mbomezulu. Uko Pose to Mbomezulu. Hey Mbomezulu, I want us to talk about the conference as of a Tata. We are playing the conference as of a Tata. I need us to meet on Friday at Katunville. Uh, it's all right. Uh, Sunday, it's a win. You know? We're told we can be 15 years later. And I found it. Who could pose the Kuman man? Film Gomezu. And the Film Gomezu, I want me to take Katunville. We said, I could make a conference. That they should do a um, tata. Now, Osandi reads this letter, gets this letter, and he goes, hmm, who goes? Uti, Ushakan, the one, no more, but my father will go meet a tat. So, I feel like I'm going to be. Then, who goes? I know, Osandi, I said, no, let, let me go to Katunbi and meet with. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go and meet with the goggles. Mm. You see, <clears throat> now, because of the lack of heavenities, who say for him, not understanding which is the literature has nothing to do with him. Maybe it might affect him. But it has nothing to do with him. Yeah, and he should have went back and understood what he said. But I don't know what he said. And in the conversation, he said, that will spare him a man. That would say, as a chatty pass or a petrol, as a driver, I can't believe. My friend, I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. I don't know what he said. He's not gone. I don't know what he said. He's not gone like that. He's not gone like that. And some of you are here, I was going to tell you the first step. Do you get it? man. You, you, I'm sorry for using the first You, 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 you fail to, uh, to, 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 to apprehend the, the, the letter. The letter was it was simply between us. So the conversation was directly to Ngomezu when I read that party. Okay, Ngomezu no propose a white team, you know, because I mean, he didn't teach why. Because who compose him, you know, who could my direct to Udo Kuzala, Gomezu, and the two understand each other. I'm not going to get him in the text. But well, because you are a dead pan, you need him in the text to understand. Because there are dynamics so up there, I'm not going to get those things to understand him in the text. There are things that you need to grasp and get in order for you to understand what. The intent of the whole writing was about. In the language, in your color, finally, see disseminate. No one in your color, finally, see. Yeah, when before you go to work, you will feel that way in our atomic building. You have to hammer down the wall and start building afresh. In the language, let's start with our definition of the Bible. We have to see the word. It is the Holy Bible. What is the Bible? Definition of the Bible. What is the Bible? The word Bible. Simply, it can be Bible, Biblia. 
یو نو هیچ اوکس دیر بو کونست لاتین تا بیبلیا او شو دی کلکشن اف بوکس سو وین یو اسپیک اف دی بایبل دی بایبل از سیمپلی دی وات دی بایبل از دی کلکشن اف وات How many books? Six, six, six books. Thirty-nine of the Old Testament. Twenty-seven of the New Testament. Can I say that? I believe in it. Hermeneutics is not for pastors; it is for every believer. You need to study because there are two years in the list. Call it hermeneutics, call it homiletics. Hermeneutics is an art of interpreting the Bible, and homiletics is an art of presentation. Now we are preaching, we are presenting, we are saying something to people. Okay, but if you don't know how to understand it, the hermeneutics before we go to the presentation. I'm not going to give a jump to my life. They love preaching. Gandhi. That's not the way to go. You start with hermeneutics before you go for what? For homiletics. Okay, I'll start again. The Bible is a collection of what? Of books. Once you understand this, this will be, this will be clear to you. The Bible is simply a book. The Bible is simply what? Yeah. So if it's simply a book, then you need to apply your mind in order for you to understand what is said here. So the Bible is a collection of books. These are 66 books, 39 of the Old Testament, 27 of the New Testament. So, the Old Testament says we to God. The Bible was not written to me. It was written for me. What does that mean? That means that when the 66 writers of the Bible were writing the Bible, they are not really having me in mind. They are not thinking about me in mind. They did not have me in mind. There was an audience to audience conversation. The writer and his audience. So I am a third party. There are dynamics there. I am what? I am a third party. I am a fourth party. There are dynamics. There are dynamics. These are the following. There are dynamics. There are dynamics. These are the following dynamics. The first dynamic, if you look at, is that of the language. The second one is political background. Okay, that's what is very important, right? These are the dynamics. The first one is what? The language. This one is very critical, the language. So they say I'm a principal because I'm using Hebrew. <laughs> Yet, they are. We are dealing with a separate text that was not written in our original languages. Uh, since we have already ascertained that the Old Testament is written, um, the Old Testament and the nine books, the Old Testament in language, if I know a Western semantic language of the Hebrew. The second one is the New Testament. New Testament is by the Indo-European language of the Greeks. Mm -hmm. 
And when you look at these languages, these languages have different dynamics. For example, this is Hebrew, this Hebrew. The name is Hebrew. This Hebrew is a Western Semitic language. Mm, it's a Western Semitic language. A follower and a culture is Arabic, is Ugaric. Um, the tablets of Elbany, they were discovered pre writing of the of the Bible. I follow under this particular language. And now the language then that goes on in history, it adapts until you know it's totally changed under the Persians that uh, the only thing that you find in fact in the times of the Oshua, you find that it is now a, a language of the Nenak. The only language that you could speak, the Galileans and the rest could speak was Aramaic. That's why even himself we are sure. All this is Aramaic. So in the adaptation, camera hamba, but adapter is in the language. You have to Aramaic. Otherwise, the Old Testament is Hebrew, in the New Testament is Hebrew, in the New Testament language of the Greek. Now, this is clearly a view. Okay? Now, I mean, we had a class, I think, on Zoom. We were teaching Greek, and it's important. I, I, I hope those guys, as I say now, uh, they can now uh, write more intelligent. Because I told you I can teach you script within 12 minutes from my letter of the and you done with it. Uh, done with that step. In class, I'm free and laser. I said, I'm trying to be less for hours and hours and hours. Is simple because it's simple seeing more like a language that deals with sounds and 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 and, 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 and reading and all of that. So there are two forms of of, of pain. Who can speak this? Is also a coin. Let's go back to the Alexander. In 131 BC, Alexander the Great you know, fights the whole world and he tries to unite it, tries to Hellenize it. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, Abadi, in fact, even the Holy Land is, is really, really challenged to such an extent that many of them are now influenced. The language that they could speak is now Hebrew. They could now connect and speak in the Hebrew language. You know, uh, speak in the 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 in the, in the, in the in Greek, and most of those people who are speaking in Greek, they are called Hellenes. It can be Hellenes, Hellenos means influence. So these guys are Greek influence. They are influenced by this Greek. Now, in New Testament, my Bible, the Bible are in Greek. Koin means common, common Greek. Why become common Greek? Because most of the New Testament writers are the Hebrews. So everything that they spoke, they spoke in conjunction with meeting, fitting the Hebrews. So that's so why it's called common Greek. Most of the New Testament, as I said, they write in the Koin Greek. There are only two uh, books, Atulagala Ekunula Epalonis, Alexandria. There is the book of Hebrews and the book of Revelation. That is why some of the scholars even doubt that John Opale, the gospel according to John, wrote the book of Revelation. But we just need a general evidence. By the way, so Opale's Alexander. So, see, a community, a guy by the name of, I don't remember, Apollos, who tell why I'm here, Alexander. Alexander is in Africa, Egypt. And when when we are talking as a perfectness, you know, when when uh, the kingdom got Alexander the Great, it's divided into four generals. We are talking as a perfectness went to Alexander, where he died by his father Saki. So that could not just go by his sister, that's a philosophy, the allies Greek, and also of of language. So I'm not going to be Alexander, but I'll be cool and let you Alexander Greek or what we call classical Greek. So they spoke in classical, so clean, 
classical book, and these people were called scholars. They were seen as scholars. Many of the New Testament writers simply spoke common Greek. So, so let me to hear it is right now. So there's a dynamic of language. All right, the Old Testament is written in Hebrew, the New Testament is written in Greek. Okay, that is very important. Now, there are words that are so different when you translate them, when you bring them back to um, our, you know, normal understood languages. For example, if you check the Gamma editing, for example, it can be chapa in the in the in the in the Hebrew. You know, it can be any show atonement. That's the way that we know it, atonement. Uh, it means to cover. Literally in the Hebrew, it means to cover. But when you come back to his Greek, it can be like a correlation to reconcile. So there are different dynamics in the languages. They have ignore a language, they can create a doctrine out of a word that is not uh, intended by the writer. So language is a very good guy. And so they spend time. I told them, you know why the thing is about evangelistic, you know, uh, uh, campaigns. Why do we spend time teaching people, you know, because I hear music. No. So if we look at someone that understand they actually buy music properly. So that when we start evangelizing, you evangelize in a proper view and understanding of the Now, Now, Jesus is going to say, as he said, this morning, we speak what we know and we testify of what we have seen. And, and, and the show also says to, to Nicodemus, you are a teacher of Israel, yet you do not know these things. You know, our culture is different. For us, information, we, 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 people who are like, who are casual about information, no, uh, it doesn't matter whether I know or I, I don't know. But when it comes to the Hebrews, if you said you are a pastor, you know, I even hear pastors saying, you know, um, you know, it doesn't mean that when I'm a pastor, uh, I should know everything. Hey, the Hebrews, if you call yourself a rabbi, <laughs> to say you are a rabbi, that's why Yeshua says to him, hey, dude, you are a teacher of Israel, but yet you do not know these things. The Hebrews were hard on the people who call themselves rabbi. You are a teacher, but you are not aware of these things. You should know if you are a rabbi, unless you say I'm a student. Then you believe, because the student cannot, uh, you know, cannot, uh, you know, uh, be over his master. He will either be equal or believe. That's the understanding. That's the understanding of the Hebrews. But because we don't understand, because we have this Western African mind, and we are casual about things. Now, when the smile goes, and you, you know, I, I don't know why, I don't know how. Now you go, you go. Well, if you go back to the culture of the first century, I ask my rabbi, and my rabbi tells me that hey, I'm not sure, or I don't know. That is why most of these rabbis that were teaching in the first century, uh, instead of saying if they don't know, they will consult other rabbis. They will say, Rabbi so and so said, or he may or she may, says this and this and this. Because then you, you have to see, you have to view, it's okay. At least he calls from other rabbis. It's some information that is given you. That's why most of the Jews were, were offended of Yeshua. Why? Because he never consulted any other rabbi. Sure. You know, he just said, I say, you have heard them say, I say. And they said, oh, his teaching comes with. So much authority, it was con it was conveyed as <coughs> prideful. What authority are you getting? Did you where did you get the authority or audacity of speaking the way you are talking? <laughs> All right. So, Queen Greek. Old Testament was written in Hebrew. The New Testament was written in what? In Queen Greek. That's why I'm saying to you, if you are embarking in the ministry. It's a challenge for you to know. It's a challenge for you to learn, to study. You don't end in a seminary. You know, you study. You have to know. Okay? But I'm not there. It's not the ability. So it's a dynamic of the language. It has not been away with this. I'm going to come. Okay, Hannah. Excuse me. Okay, Hannah. Titus. 
Maka Mafana no Kahana or Kaisa or Sohaitis. Then all of them in our English are translated as hair. And when you look at these words, there are two different, there are three different words. You know, so when you understand, then you get uh, understanding of the language, then you can sort of, you know, it becomes clear for you. You study precisely uh, according to the intent of the life. Number, number, number two, historical background. Historical what? Background. Historical <coughs> background. Because, you know, you have to understand that as Ukibe was writing to Mugomizu, there is history in between them. So my Ukuruma, Ukuruma from the position of history. So this then will help me to understand the intent of giving and how Umwamizu should receive what given is saying to him. This is based on history. What is the history of their relationship? Yeah. Why did he even consider to write what he wrote? History. Historical background. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe in South Africa, in South Africa, Africa especially in the in in the understanding of the importance of history. Um, history is very critical, not only in theology but in human life, because history helps us. To navigate where we came from, not to stay there, but to see problems. Because our solutions are many are not in the future. Our solutions are many are from understanding history. Okay, where did the problem? Where did this problem come from? So that then we can solve here in the present. So to change the future. Okay, so. For us, those who told me, hey, you should not know me because everything I tell them, I tell them, it's okay. Also, Paul, you know, the apostle, uh, Paul, uh, the apostle of Jesus Christ to the church of Corinth, and he says, okay, let's talk about Corinth. So, this is such a thing about what you are, geographical setting. What were the conditions of the, of the Corinthian city, which, had a ripple effect on how the Corinthians thought. Because who Paul drove a Bahaji, he is writing because their influences, because so is influential the environment is feeling like you. You like it, you want to rely on you are influenced by the environment. Right? That's why in politics may figure the first thing you find it affects, you find it affected three things, find it affected one elapse of history, two elapse of geographical setting. Because it seems like you get me, I know, saying you get the freedom, but you're still staying in one and the same place. Right, which then constantly reminds you of where you were. So I should remove you where you are to see, to make you view now. Now, we are in a new regime. Okay, I mean, because I'm the political. But I'm saying, you know, a geographical what? Setting. You know, I see that, to understand. Now, I guess I'll give you an example. You know, there's been a debate between, and I'm not going to make my when it comes to hermeneutics, they consider hermeneutics when it does not agree with them. Then, Okay, in the job of the university, many women really talk about covering their hair. Paul is saying women must cover their hair. You start the right there. Okay, wait a minute. But Paul, why could a man into the Corinthians? Mm -hmm. Then you say, God, because now I say, how conducive for them? Say so now I should then apply hermeneutics. No, hermeneutics should apply. To be consistent with studying the text, you have to constant, constantly uh, view the text according to what. To hermeneutics, so see, that hermeneutics say apply. Okay? Why should we apply hermeneutics? Okay, no people will be. Now we know that why should we apply hermeneutics? Because misinterpretation. The 
This is where we my technicalities. We go back to the technicalities. Misinterpretation is what? Is a pretext. Yeah, let me show you it. Because we have here we are getting him off the application. Hey, I read the text. Then I was running the application. You get him on the spell. You might go. You go to where? You go to Cotton View. Hey, go to Cotton View, by the way. You rush to Cotton View. Then you find out. Can I name my name? Sure. At the end of the day, you read that. No, I waste a lot of money. Because misinterpretation, if you you are now in a pretext. You miss the text. There are two ways of reading the Bible. Let's get into technicalities now. There are two ways of studying the Bible. And now you are clear. The first one is what we call what exegesis. Yes, really. It's in. I say, Jesus. Okay. I said, Jesus. I said, Jesus. Never let me class this week. You remember, we take Yanomos Pona X. X is a preposition to take out. You get it? Then, I, 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 exegesis means exegesis which should take out in order to expose. Mm -hmm. So an exeget is the one that reads the text. So the exeget reads from the text. And I suggest, you are inserting, it reads to An exeget comes to the text with an empty mind. Okay? I approach the text with an empty mind in order to extract from the text. <clears throat> so I'm gleaning, I'm receiving, I'm milking from the text. And the exeget comes and goes, ah, I have an ideology. You know, I have a concept. But how can the Bible prove my concept? Imagine it. Umkuru Ami used to say uh, the greatest, and this was my, 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 my teacher, my Bible teacher, he used to say, you know, the greatest thing that a preacher can do is to rape the Bible. I would, I would like to me, like, oh, why does I draw a statement? Why do you say this? And the greatest thing of a preacher is to rape the Bible. You know, you know, I remember one time when I was standing before you, this, this guy was very critical. And I thank God for him. I'm going to tell you, because sometimes I would stand up there because the Sabbath man started to show my head. And mana, mana, fala. You're standing there. Let me show you. You're standing there and you are opening the chapter. I was like, this is of John chapter 3, verse number 16. Yeah, I was like, you know, what color is he? Just say bishop. bishop <laughs> and he used to say, and he used to say to me, you know what? The greatest thing that a preacher would do, and he was critical that guy, is to rape the Bible. <laughs> and when you're strong, this is what I learned the old thing. Jarama in our family. Anytime when I stand in front. I must understand it. I must not read the Bible. Mm -hmm. In fact, I must allow the Bible to speak for itself mm -hmm. and not speak for it in the name of revelation. Mm -hmm. Because this is what is happening. 
Most people who say they have revelation, they are not a Bible. I was a man. I was a man. I was a man. I was a man.
find out where did it come from? And then when I read into the text, you know, then, what they are saying and what the text is saying, it's different. Okay? So before we go back to what, what the text is saying, let's find out where did it go wrong here? That's why I went to the that I want to attend the east. Because who told us, yeah, that can happen. Who came with this country? Who are you know, the city? Who are the invented that? I can. This is orthodox. It cannot change. And longer than that, I know why. Young man. Um, I was watching kind of the, the show on 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 Discovery Channel. I always want to say it's a it's a it's a science of stupid. Mm -hmm. I don't really watch it. Um, you know, I've watched somewhere. <laughs> it's funny. That's a human nature. I've watched somewhere, uh, Matatabandu, they took seven people and they were standing on the line like this, at the morning. They were standing on the line. So, uh, these guys, they are part of the program. So, if anyone asks you why are you standing, say, I don't know. But we are two, we are going to get something nice. Don't, don't explain, don't explain anything. Just, just say, I don't know. But I'm told I'm going to get something like So as, as people are, are, are running in the morning, you know, oh my God, uh, guys, why, why are you standing there? No, I don't know. You know, but, you know, we are going to get something like Okay, let me yes. <laughs> <laughs> And the other one came. And the other one came. And the, other, and the line was, was increasing by the day. It was increasing by the day. I found my camera. They had to show the... The, the, the human brain, you know. I, yeah, you make you lie. Then you make you. But you have three, four. It's you, your ham. Your ham, it's you. I said, I said, tell me more. You know. Your ham, your ham, your ham. Yeah, they're pulling up on you, guys. But you have seven. But you know, but you know, what for you? The director. But you know, he more, normally it closes at eight o'clock. Today it's not going to close at eight o'clock. So um, uh, it's going to close at one o'clock. Oh, wow. Yeah. When one o'clock came, 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 so we people, uh, it's not this thing. We are like sheep. We follow everything that we get from people without even questioning it. I, 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 I was asked that man, of course you have to how did you come to this? I told them, you know, growing up, I was not even cool. I was I had a very inquisitive mind. No. I don't know, probably God knew it. I don't have the kind of time when I'll be a teacher. I was having a very interesting man. Well, you know, I was at the school, you know, when, when, when the guy was teaching us about in the beginning, God created everything. And, and suddenly something came in my mind. Said, Where was God when he created this thing? And I asked my, 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 my teacher, Sir, where was God when he created it? I see, but because actually, I want, there's a foolish question. Or how about ever? Hey, God, huh? this guy asked an unwarranted question. And I feel like it's like, yeah, why not? You see, it's a human mind. Yeah, why not? Who said it's a fool? Yeah, it's a fool. Who said it's a fool? Who said it's a Yeah, can you pose? Now, why not? I said that. Okay, yeah, who's going to But say, I'm going to say, I was a son of a daughter. I can't ask. Because I had so many questions I needed to answer. And every time when I ask questions, but you know this question is what? It's foolish. You are. We're not giving me. There's no in theology, there is no such a thing as a foolish question. Because theology is trying to understand the you know, it's like, it God's logic. Because the word theology, theos, the word theology, it's it's theos. Theos and Logos. 
Theos and Logos. Theos is God, Logos, the Anglo-Sonic Amelis chronology. So theology is God's logic. So, no, Kofus is a theologian. I'm not a theologian. All of us are theologians. I'm not just the only theologian. Once you talk about God, Theos, then it makes you a theologian. So because you are applying God's logic. In the beginning was logic. Logic was with God. Logic was God. Yeshua is God's logic. So let's speak about Christ. That's theology. Theology has nothing to do with books. An academic, you know, grandeur uh, or what. But it has something to do with understanding God. God has given you logic. And what logic did he give you? He has given you what? This is God's logic. So to understand God, you need to open what? Your Bible. Your book. And it carries what? God's logic. I am afraid of a believer who does not call himself a theologian because I ordinary Bible doesn't care about the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right, so all of us are theologians. Sahaba, sir? Are you still with, you still with me? Yes. Uh, about what the general manager was in Giga, Let me just wrap up here. Sahaba, what is the name of the name of Break here because I am so that you will enjoy uh, this, this session. Because here in this introduction, we are still going to get in a lot of stuff. So, this poor man, um, the Bible, you should just know it. So, we'll try. Huh? We'll try for him. All right, okay. Uh, now, we'll move to our meeting. We're going to sit at 12. Okay, she just put it out. 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 Okay, 20? She just put it out. Okay, okay, good, good. Put it out. So, it's, 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 it's God's logic, okay? So, this is why, this is why, this is important, this is why we need, you know, this is why we need, the you know, in humanity. Okay, all of us are on the same page. Okay. 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 Because now we are making introduction, so so we are the Bible now itself. In interpreting of the text, how do we deal with the text itself? Now, the first thing that also the one that the Bible in love of our chapters in. Hey, these things can be a hindrance in our study. And verses and yes, sir. Okay, sorry. Uh, I want to ask what, what, what like if in other language you would you generally have dialects of, of that language. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 That idea, which is, uh, for instance, the, the people who wrote the New Testament wrote it in Korean, Korean, yeah. and all of that. Would, would there then be different dialects within that Korean, Korean, and therefore, and how would that then uh, affect uh, how we read it today and how we probably understand it today? You are asking a very important question, yes. uh, For example, George E. Korean, Greek, Korean, Greek, because he was trying, as you are saying, you are a, a, a baby or a, a suit who is trying to speak soon. Yeah. You find that uh, there is a way that, in which you pronounce 
with which then change the dynamic of the language. Uh, for example, the, as you said, the New Testament, they, 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 they spoke in Korean Korean. Not intently, uh, because most of them were Hebrews. So in order for their language to be understood, then a dialect was born, it is called Koine Greek. It was spoken by Hebrews. So to fit their ways in line with the com comprehensive Hebrew. So, so it, that's, that's how it changed. That's why then you find it with it, Okay, let me say to you, some of my, my translations as it continue. So yeah, it did have an effect on, on, on languages. I, a simple example that I can make, but I'm not even the Hebrew writer quotes from Psalm chapter two, to Hebrews chapter two. You know, what is the man that you are so mindful of him? For you have made him a little lower than angels. When you read Tanakh, which is the Hebrew Bible, it reads, and you have made him a little lower than Elohim. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you can see the dynamism of these two languages. Now, in a way, your translator is really then. But yet, when you look at the New Testament, it, it, it sort of also is uh, said to fit to the fulfillment which were in Christ using that particular adaption. Uh, for us now, to answer the question, for us now, you find the meeting. English, our English really robs us of many things. Because if you look at the English language itself, English language is not just a language, it's a dialect. Mm -hmm. It is a dialect which is a combination of uh, uh, French, Latin, and Greek. So the Anglo Saxon, when they came together, uh, this dialect was born. And you find it then. In translating of the second text as a Bible, you find the within it sort of falls short in explaining some of the words. Uh, so that's why then you, you, you go to, that's why I, I told you, students there, Uti, please get what we call interlinear. Because in fact, even in the order of the putting of words, it's not the same. Yeah, the Uti, many times we build our doctrines, our idioms. Mm. Because you don't understand the dynamics of the language. For example, um, he was rich. For our sake, became poor. Then through his poverty, you might be rich. And then you must have back to your master classified. It was rich. That was an idiom. And, and to understand, and another thing about Paul, and Paul, and Paul, Paul sometimes, and, and, um, yes, <laughs> <laughs> Paul a lot. Yeah, well, because Paul, who a from the, 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 the Greek um, philosopher, which was the pagan, by the way. And when he quotes him, he quotes him as if he's a pious. For example, he called him as a he didn't find that was a poem actually called Epimenides. Mm. Mm. Speaking about Apollo, the, the, the god, the, 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 the Greek god, which is Apollo. Mm. And he was speaking to the to the to the to the curtains mm. concerning the and Paul quotes it. And quotes it as if he, because he, I mean the position he asks that though you don't understand what what Paul is quoting from. Now this was from Epimenes. Paul simply extracted that. And you will understand Paul was a very silent individual. You know, to communicate his point. He would just quiet in something so that he's on the enemy. But me now, who is in the 21st century, reading the scripture in English, saying it's not a word. Yeah, yeah, he piped it. Yeah, in him we move, in him we live, right? So, yeah, yeah, it does. That's why uh, we need to really be diligent. Um, you know, some of you are not versions. We'll come to the version and deal with the versions themselves. Uh, that's why we must be diligent students to get to the different strongs, um, you know, vice dictionary, vice even, we are Italian, and those, if you give a doctrinal, you know, be fair in a sense that. It sort of again, I have emphasis, keep eye in some way. You know, 
Futabang in the certain way. So, um, yeah, language learning.